So uh, I will I will be uh, speaking on the on the Yamabe equation. So let me remind you the Yamabe equation is an, uh, an elliptic equation on a, on a manifold. So M will be uh, throughout this talk a closed Riemannian manifold of dimension larger than or equal to three, and G is its uh, Riemannian metric. Um, I will denote by SG the scalar curvature of M uh, with respect to the metric G. Delta G is the Laplace Beltrami operator. And this uh, numbers AM, well, AM is a constant that depends only on the dimension. And two to the star is the usual critical Sobolev exponent in dimension M. So the operator this uh, elliptic operator is called a conformal Laplacian. And in fact, it, it has the property that is conformally invariant. So it is the suitable uh, operator to treat uh, uh, problems in conformal geometry. So let me remind you what the Yamabe problem is. So, so if one has a manifold, a smooth manifold with a metric G, and one takes a, another metric, one wants to classify manifolds. And a way to classify them is uh, by um, conformal equivalence. So one says that two metrics G and G twiddles on M are conformally equivalent if uh, there exists a smooth function, uh, rho positive, such that uh, G twiddles is uh, rho times G. So this means at each point, one metric is a multiple of the other one, a positive multiple of the other one. And uh, the, this uh, constant rho varies uh, smoothly along the manifold. So then there is a, a, a very a famous result, a classical result called the uniformization theorem. And this uniformization theorem is uh, uh, for surfaces. So if one has a surface that is a manifold of dimension two, then it is classical that uh, uh, it always admits a metric conformally equivalent to the given metric G, uh, such that uh, the curvature is constant. And this result was proved by Poincaré and Kirby more than 100 years ago. So a natural question is whether uh, uh, this uh, result is true in higher dimensions. So this result was proved in dimension two. And uh, the question whether it is also true in higher dimensions is what is called the Yamabe problem. So the Yamabe uh, problem is whether every uh, close Riemannian manifold, M with a metric G of dimension larger than or equal to three, admits a metric that is conformally equivalent to the given metric and for which the, the manifold has constant scalar curvature. So it is called the Yamabe problem because Yamabe in, the, in 1960 published a paper giving a positive answer to this question. Unfortunately, Trudinger eight years later showed that uh, there was an important mistake in the proof of uh, given by Yamabe. Uh, and in fact, what Trudinger showed is that uh, in some cases, the, the proof given by Yamabe was, was correct, but in many other cases, it was not correct. And the, and the mistake was an important mistake. So this was, of, of course, uh, 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 very bad for the poor Yamabe, who probably was very sad about it, but it was very good for mathematics because it triggered a lot of, of uh, uh, research around this question. So just to make a long story short, let me tell you that uh, 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 considerable progress wa was made by Aubin in 1976. So he proved that the answer was yes in many, in many cases. I will come back to this again in a, in a few slides. And finally, Schoen covered all the, all the remaining cases. So the, the, the thing is that this, uh, this question can be expressed by uh, an elliptic equation, namely, if G twiddles is rho times G, and we write uh, this rho as U to the two to the star minus two with uh, U positive, then 
uh, the scalar curvature for the for the given metric G and the scalar curvature for the new metric G twiddles satisfy this elliptic equation on the manifold M. So, uh, giving a positive answer to the Yamabe problem means putting here a constant and looking for a positive solution to this equation. So, in other words, in order to solve the Yamabe problem, we have to show that there exists a positive solution to this equation on a manifold M for some constant K in R. Now, this is the Euler-Lagrange equation to the functional given by this quotient, okay? So, if we find a minimizer for this quotient, then we have a positive solution for the Yamabe equation. This infimum has a name. It is called the Yamabe invariant of the manifold M, and it is indeed invariant uh, under conformal diffeomorphisms. So let me give you an example. So uh, let us take M to be the standard sphere. So we take the sphere in dimension M with the standard metric induced by, by, um, by the uh, scalar product in Rm plus 1. And now let us take the stereographic projection. Now, the stereographic projection is a conformal diffeomorphism. And since the Yamabe equation is conformally invariant, it turns out that the Yamabe equation on this sphere is equivalent to the Yamabe equation in Rm. But what is the Yamabe equation in Rm? Well, it is simply this very well-known equation to all of us, right? Because the scalar curvature in Rm is, is zero. So this is the Yamabe equation in Rm. And what is the Yamabe invariant? Well, the Yamabe invariant is given by taking the quotient of the integral of the operator at u times u divided by the square of the L2 star norm. So this is the same as the quotient of the integral of the gradient square divided by the square of the L2 star norm. And this, as we all know, is precisely the best constant for the Sobolev uh, embedding. So the Yamabe invariant for the sphere is nothing but the best Sobolev constant. Now, as we all know, this, this quotient is attained at the so-called standard bubble and it is invariant under dilations. So this means that uh, since the standard bubble is a, a solution, so a minimizer for the Yamabe quotient, then every when we reparameterize the bubble in this way, we get again a solution. And this is precisely, uh, uh, I mean, when we let epsilon go to zero, what we have is blow up. So this uh, family of solutions will not converge at a solution, but it will blow up. And this was the, the reason of uh, Yamabe's mistake. So Yamabe uh, treated the, the elliptic equation as if it were subcritical, but he didn't take into account that there was this phenomenon of a blow up. So, in order to, to be able to show the existence of a minimizer, one needs a compactness condition. And this, is, this uh, compactness condition was given by Aubin. So, uh, an important contribution of Aubin was to show that if the Yamabe invariant of the manifold M is strictly smaller than the Yamabe invariant of the sphere, in other words, strictly smaller than the, than the best Sobolev constant, then this infimum is attained. And then, of course, in order to check this inequality, one needs a test function. And the natural test function uh, would be to think uh, of the bubble. So one takes the manifold M, one takes a point on the manifold, and then one takes the tangent space at that point. 
and on the tangent space one puts the bubble so one has to cut off the bubble and project it to the manifold using the stereographic projection so if we do this uh, one uh, what Obama showed is that uh, indeed one gets a good test function but only if the manifold is not locally conformally flat and if the dimension of the manifold is larger than or equal to six so the contribution of a band was to show that the Yamabe uh, problem the Yamabe conjecture is true when the manifold is not locally conformally flat and the dimension is larger than or equal to six and then the, the rest of the cases are more uh, delicate and those were taken care uh, by, by uh, uh, Schrödinger. Now, of course, if the Yamabe invariant is negative or smaller than or equal to zero, this inequality is uh, trivially satisfied. So the difficult cases are the cases in when the Yamabe invariant is positive. And this is a, this, that's equivalent to saying that the, the conformal Laplace is coercive. So I will assume from now on that the conformal Laplace is coercive, or in other words, that the Yamabe invariant of the manifold is strictly positive. Okay, so now let me tell you what uh, do we mean by uh, uh, um, an optimal partition. Okay, so we are going to look at partitions for the manifold M. In other words, we are going to to take an integer L larger than or equal to two, and we are going to look at collections of open sets that are non-empty and pairwise disjoint in M, okay? And a partition will be said to be an optimal L partition for the Yamabe equation if following two conditions are satisfied. So the first condition that we want uh, uh, is that uh, when you look at the Yamabe equation on each one of these open sets with Dirichlet boundary condition, we want this equation to have a non-trivial solution and we want, in fact, to have a least energy non-trivial solution. So we want that, uh, so one condition, the first condition is that there exists a non-trivial solution to the Dirichlet problem on each one of these uh, elements of the partition with the property that the energy is minimal. So that uh, this uh, function, uh, u sub i, has the property that the Yamabe quotient is precisely the infimum, okay? So this is the first condition. And the second condition says that the total energy has to minimize the total energy with respect to any other partition, okay? So these are the two conditions that uh, we ask in order to have an optimal L partition for the Yamabe equation. So the question is whether there is an optimal L partition, okay? So this is the, the question that we would like to, to, to answer and uh, the answer is, uh, is very easy because, in general, not every manifold admits an optimal L partition. So, uh, for example, the standard sphere does not admit an optimal L partition. And the reason is very simple because, well, as I told you before, it is the same to look at the sphere or to look at RM because they are conformally equivalent. But if you take any open subset of RM and you look at this infimum, at the infimum of, of these quotients, we know that this infimum coincides with the infimum, with the, with the best of all constant. So the best of all constant is the same for RM or for any open subset of RM. And now since, since these two things are the same, we can argue by contradiction. So if, if uh, this infimum in omega were attained at some u, then if we extend u by zero outside of omega, then we would get a solution of this equation. 
But this equation has no solution that is zero, zero outside of an open set, okay? So in other words, we need to find, so the real question is whether we can give conditions for the existence of an optimal L partition for the Yamabe equation uh, for any L larger than or equal to two. Now, the question is how do you get an optimal partition? Well, here there is a very, a very beautiful idea because I mean, we are used to, to, uh, to using mathematics to solve problems in physics. But here we are going to proceed in, the dif in a different, in the opposite direction. So the, the, the thing is we are going to use an idea that comes from physics in order to, uh, be, to find or to solve this uh, geometric problem. And uh, this physical uh, phenomenon is uh, what happens with Bose-Einstein condensates. So what is a Bose-Einstein cond condensate? Well, this is a state of matter that is taken by certain atoms or certain particles when they are cooled down to almost zero temperature. So this phenomenon was predicted by Bose and Einstein almost uh, uh, 100 years ago and was um, uh, experimentally found just uh, uh, quite recently about, uh, uh, well, it was in 1998, right? So uh, what happens with the particles when you cool them down is that uh, they stop being separate particles and they become a single uh, quantum state. Now, when you take two different kinds or more uh, different kinds of these particles and you put them together and you mix them and then you cool them down uh, to almost zero temperature, what you see is that the different uh, kinds of particles segregate. So they, they occupy different portions of space and they are disjoint from from one another now the the model the mathematical model for this phenomenon is is a, an elliptic system and it was shown by conti taracini and Bertini, and also by cheng lin lin and lin that there is a connection between elliptic systems with large competitive interaction and optimal partition so what we're going to do is we're going to look at an elliptic system related to the Yamabe equation. So if we, if we look at the, the left-hand side, is just the, the, the Yamabe operator, then we have this part, which is the, the, the non-linearity given by the uh, critical exponent. So if we forget about the sum, what we have is the Yamabe equation, okay? But then we are going to look at this interaction term. And this interaction term, the exponent, so the total exponent is the same as the one here. So this gamma is to start over two. And the, the, the thing is that we are going to look at coefficients that are negative, okay? So we are going to look at negative coefficients, which means that the interaction force between the two particles, UJ, two states, uj and uj, uh, is, is repelling. So the two states uh, are subject to this repulsive uh, forces, lambda ij. And the idea is that when you make this lambda ij very large, uh, you, you hoped to find a separation of the states. Now, uh, this, this uh, system has trivial solutions. So if you, if you, for instance, take a solution ui of the Yamabe equation and you make uj equal to zero for every j different from i, you get a solution of the system. So we don't want this kind of solutions. What we want are solutions such that all components are different from zero. And this kind of solutions are called fully non-trivial solutions. So we are looking for fully non-trivial solutions to the Yamabe system. And then the strategy that we will follow 
uh, is the, the stat strategy that was follow followed by, by Conti Terracini Verzini and by uh, Chang Lin Lin and Lin. That is, first of all, well, first of all, we have to show that the, that the system has a least energy fully non-trivial solution. So this is the first the first problem. Then, if if this is so, then we we want to see what happens when these interaction coefficients go to minus infinity when they they uh, grow and get very very large in absolute value. But since they are negative, they go to minus infinity. Then we want to see whether these limit profiles indeed produce an optimal partition. Okay. And then finally, we want also to study the regularity properties of the free, free boundaries of the partition. So this is the this is the program. And now let me let me show you first the results and then i will give you some ideas of how we go about proving these results okay so okay so uh, so these results uh, are joint work with angela pistoia and hugo tavares and uh, well, the first result concerns the existence of solutions for the Yamabe system, okay? So, uh, the result says that if, if the manifold is not locally conformally flat and the dimension of the manifold is larger than or equal to nine, then the Yamabe system has indeed a fully non-trivial least energy solution. And indeed, one needs some conditions because, for example, when the Yamabe, uh, when the manifold is uh, the standard sphere, the Yamabe system does not have a fully non-trivial least energy solution for any L. Okay, so the sphere is, of course, locally conformally flat, so it is not covered by this by this result. Okay. Okay. So once we have our solutions then we need to see how they behave when when uh, the lambdas go to minus infinity okay so we will look at the sequence of lambda n's going to minus infinity and for each lambda n we will take a, a positive fully non-trivial least energy solution to our system now here we will need stronger assumptions. So the assumptions that we need in order to, to have the desired properties, well, the first one is the, the manifold is not locally conformally flat. Here we need higher dimension, so we need that the dimension is larger than or equal to 10. And in dimension 10, we need an additional geometric condition that says that the square of the scalar curvature at every point in M must be smaller than 528, the square of the, of the Weyl tensor. So the Weyl tensor is, is the conformal part of the, of the um, uh, curvature tensor, and it uh, usually plays an important role in this uh, kind of problems. Okay, so if this assumptions are satisfied, then as lambda n goes to minus infinity, the least energy solution to the system behaves as follows. First of all, each component, the ith component, converges strongly to a function that I will call u infinity i, strongly in the sublet space and also in C0 alpha. Each one of these uh, limit functions is larger than or equal to zero. It is non-trivial. And you see, since it is continuous, then we can look at a set of points in M such that U infinity I of P is strictly positive. 
Now this this omega i is not non-empty because the u infinity i is non-trivial. So we have an, a non-empty open set, and the fact is that these guys solve the the Yamabe equation in omega i with Dirichlet boundary conditions. So this this omega i is a good candidate. For being uh, an, uh, uh, for giving an optimal partition, and indeed, the second statement in this result says that this collection of open sets is indeed an optimal L partition for the Yamabe equation. So, in particular, each one of these omega i's is connected. Then one can study the, the regularity properties of this partition. And one sees that it uh, has very nice regularity properties. So if we take the complement of the union of these open sets, it uh, consists of a regular part, R, and a singular part, S. So the regular part is a manifold of dimension M minus one, and the singular part has dimension smaller than or equal m minus 2. So in particular, what this says is that m is covered by the union of the closures of the omega i's. The, the limit functions, the u infinity i's, behave very nicely at points in the bound, bound at points in the regular part, in the, in the regular part of the, of the uh, free boundary because the normal derivatives of, of two components of the two uh, limit functions uh, have the same absolute value. And at, at the singular set, this uh, uh, normal uh, derivative is zero. And finally, another thing that one can say is that if uh, you have a system with only two equations, so if you only have u infinity one and u infinity two, then since these guys are disjoint, okay, and both are positive, this difference is sign changing. And in fact, it is a least energy nodal solution to the Yamabe equation. Okay, so let me now put these two results together and then if we put these two results together, well, we have to, to assume the stronger condition, which is the, the, are the assumptions in the second result. So under the assumptions of the second result, what these two results are telling us is that for every L larger than or equal to two, there exists an optimal partition for the Yamabe equation, such that each omega i is connected and the complement of the union of the omega i's uh, consists of a regular part and a singular part. The regular part has, is a manifold of dimension m minus one, and the singular part is, uh, has dimension m minus two. Okay, and well, the other properties that I mentioned previously, but uh, I wanted to, to sum up the result here. And then the other part was the existence of a nodal solution for the Yamabe equation under these assumptions. So we get this nodal solution by taking a system with only two equations. Okay, so this, this second theorem is interesting because, uh, well, there is a result by Aman and Umber that, uh, well, they, they showed the existence of a least energy nodal solution for the Yamabe equation when the manifold is not locally conformally flat and has dimension larger than or equal 11. So we are improving this result a little bit as we are in, in, including dimension 10, provided that this geometrical uh, condition holds true, okay? But uh, a nice thing, uh, I mean, an interesting thing is also that, I mean, Aman and Umber say, well, a nodal solution to the Yamabe equation 
does not give a metric because one has the, the, the nodal set and in the nodal set, when you, you multiply the, the solution u, u bar by g, then this is not a metric, but they call this a generalized metric. So what they say is, well, a nodal solution gives rise to a generalized metric that is conformally equivalent to the given metric in, in piecewise in the pieces were in the complement of the nodal set. Now, they, they uh, hoped to find a least energy nodal solution with an arbitrary number of nodal domains. What they could do is they, they were able to find a least energy nodal solution that has two, two nodal domains. And in fact, as we know, the existence of, of solutions with multiple nodal domains is, is complicated, it's not an easy question. But a good alternative to that is an optimal partition. Because you see, if you take an optimal partition, then the first condition that the optimal partition satisfies is that there is a solution to the Dirichlet problem on each one of these guys, uh, of this set omega i. So if we call ui this least energy solution and we uh, call u bar the sum of all of these uh, functions then what we get when we take u u bar to the power two star minus two times the given metric we get a piecewise conformally equi uh, a, a, a metric that is piecewise conformally equivalent to the given one so in a sense Optimal partitions are a good alternative for nodal solutions, and uh, they are they are. Uh, I mean, it is it is easier to 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 find an optimal partition than uh, a, a, a nodal solution with a prescribed number of nodal sets. So this is kind of a, of uh, an interesting idea, I think. So, okay, so let me tell you a few words about the proof, okay? So, uh, the first thing is we want to find a solution to the Yamabe system. So, the Yamabe system is variational, so we have a variational functional associated to the Yamabe system, and we, we want to find a minimizer on a suitable constraint, which is a kind of a, a Nehari set. So, uh, as I, as I told you before, a minimizer does not always exist, so it doesn't exist when we take the standard sphere. So, uh, what we need, it doesn't exist because one has blow up. So, what one needs is a compactness condition, so the first thing that we do is we establish a compactness condition, and this compactness condition says well, if the infimum of the functional on the constraint is smaller than a certain number, then a minimizer exists. And the, this compactness condition that we find reduces to a Vance condition, to the one I told you about at the beginning of the talk, when, the, when, the, when you're only looking at one equation, okay? So this is a gen we find a compactness condition that generalizes Oban's condition, and then we have to find a test function. So we give a test function that is defined in terms of the test function. Well, we use the test function uh, for the Yamabe problem, and then we have to compute the energy. And for computing the energy, the advantage is that uh, we have already very nice estimates that were obtained by Esposito, Pistoia, and Vetois, and we use these estimates, and here is where these assumptions on the dimension and on the manifold not being locally uh, conformally flat come in, okay? So this is more or less the, the, the idea. And now, for, for uh, uh, in order to look at what happens with the limit profiles, well, we, we want to see that uh, what happens when the lambdas go to minus infinity. Okay, so we take a, a fully non-trivial least energy solution, 
And it is easy to see that each one of the components converges weakly to, to some function in H1. So this is, this is not, not a problem. The problem is, of course, uh, uh, proving strong convergence. So what we prove first is that one has a weak, that these functions give what we call a weak optimal partition. This means the following. This means we prove that each one of these components is different from zero. We prove that each one of these components lies on the Nehari manifold of for, for the Yamabe equation. That is, it satisfies this, this equality. Then we also show that the, the, these functions have pairwise disjoint supports. So when you multiply the i's with the j's, you get zero. And then we see that the sum of the energies minimizes the sum of the energies of any set of functions that satisfy these first three conditions. So this is what we call a weak optimal partition. And again here, what we, the, the, main, the main thing that one has to show is that u infinity i is different from zero. That is that there is no blow up. So again, one needs to establish a compactness condition, ensuring that these uh, components, that the limit profiles are different from zero. And then one has to take a test function. Here, the test function is more, more complicated, and so the, the, the energy estimates are more delicate. But um, here is where, where one needs the assumptions that uh, the, the manifold is not locally conformally flat that the dimension is larger than or equal to 10, and that in dimension 10, one has suitable uh, geometric conditions, okay? Okay, so once this is established, then one needs to show that this weak optimal partition is indeed an optimal partition. And this requires some regularity. So if we are able to show that each one of these components is continuous, then one can look at the set where they are different from zero. If they are, if this, if the function u infinity i is continuous, then the set is open, and it is easy to see that this is an optimal partition. Okay, so how does one go about showing that uh, that uh, that the u's are continuous? Well, one needs to 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 see that uh, the components of the solutions of the system are uniformly Hölder bounded, okay? And uh, this is, of course, a local question. So we have to look at the Yamabe equation locally. And uh, the Yamabe equation, the Yamabe system locally looks like this, okay? It looks like a system that is non-autonomous, where these coefficients, uh, uh, little a of x, are nothing but the square root of, of the determinant of g written in, in, in local coordinates. And this matrix a of x is just the, the small a of x times the inverse of the, of the matrix, uh, of the Riemannian metric uh, written in local coordinates. So, for, for systems uh, uh, in, a, in, an, in, a, in an open subset of Rm, when the, when the matrix A is the identity and the function A is equal to 1, then this, this result, the uniform holder bounds, have been proved for systems with these properties by Noris Tavares, uh, Terracini, and Bertini. And uh, here what we do in order to, to generalize those results is we follow a paper by Suave, Tavares, Terracini, and Cilio. So fortunately, I mean, we have we had an expert in the team. So Hugo knew precisely what were the delicate points. And so, uh, I mean, we obtained the result. 
And finally, well, uh, again, for the regularity of the free boundaries, well, Hugo, in his lecture uh, some weeks ago, talked about this. And again, what we have to do is we have to extend, we need to extend the results of Tavares and Terracini to, to, uh, to this uh, non-autonomous system. Okay? And this is, this is what, uh, what we did. Okay? And finally, just to, for the last part of the problem, what we need to do is we want to show that uh, when the system has two equations and we take the difference of the, of the limit profiles, we want to show that this is a, a, a least energy nodal solution to the Yamabe equation. So it is very easy to show that this difference belongs to what is usually called the, the equator of the Nehari manifold for the Yamabe equation, okay? So, uh, and it has minimal energy on, on the set. So then uh, the, the standard argument, for instance, in, in Castro, Cosio, and Neuberger, allows us to show that this is indeed a sign changing solution to the Yamabe equation, okay? Now we, we suspect, we suspect that uh, uh, our result in the, should be optimal. I mean, we, we have now shown that there is a least energy solution for the Yamabe equation when the manifold is not locally conformally flat. It has dimension larger than or equal to 10. And uh, uh, it satisfies the, the, the uh, opposite inequality the, to the one written here in dimension 10. And we believe this is this should be kind of optimal. I mean, we have some reasons that make us believe, but I mean, this is this is, this is of course an open question. So now let me go to another question. So the question is, okay, so we have a least energy nodal solution for the Yamabe equation in some cases. Okay, so. Maybe, so the, the next question is, does it have higher energy nodal solutions for any, any manifold? So it doesn't have, it maybe doesn't have a least energy nodal solution, but perhaps it does have higher energy nodal solutions. And this brings me to the last part of the talk, which is uh, uh, on symmetric optimal partitions for the Yamabe equation. So this uh, is, uh, joint work with Angela, part of the results, and the other, uh, the results for the sphere are joint work with Alberto Saldana and Andre Schulkin. So, what we do is, now we go, we look at partitions with symmetries. So, we take a group of isometries of the manifold M, and uh, let me call, for if, if I take a point P in M, let me uh, denote by GP the, the G orbit of the point P. So let me give you an example. So if you take the sphere, the M dimensional sphere in Rm plus one, and you write Rm plus one as Rn one times Rn two, then you can take the group of isometries of Rn minus, of Rn one, times the group of isometries of Rn2, where I, uh, uh, N1 plus N2 is M plus 1, okay? So we take this group of isometries acting on the sphere, and then we want to look at the orbits. So what are the orbits? Well, I, the G orbit of a point can be three different things. It is either the product of the spheres in dimension N minus 1, and n minus 2, n2 minus 1, or the sphere in dimension n1 minus 1, or the sphere in dimension n2 minus 1. So the, the, the picture goes like this. If you take the picture in dimension 3, so the dimension of my sphere is 3, so I am looking at the sphere uh, after I take the stereographic projection. So if I take the stereographic projection, then I am really looking at R3, and uh, so N1 and N2 are going to be equal to two. So what are the orbits? Well, 
If n1 and n2 both are equal to 2, then here we have a circle, here we have another circle, and here we have the product of two circles, so we have a torus, okay? So one of the circles is the circle that uh, goes inside of this torus that we can see here. The other circle is the c-axis in R3 together with the point at infinity, okay? And then all other orbits, they, they look like tori. So they are like uh, the tori that, that, that we see here, okay? So what I want you to notice here is that every orbit, every G orbit in this example has dimension larger than or equal to one, because this has dimension one, this has dimension one, and this has dimension two. Okay, so now we are going to look at partitions where we are going to ask that each one of these sets is G invariant. In other words, if a point is in omega i, then the whole G orbit has to belong to omega i. And then we define what we mean by an optimal GL partition. So an optimal GL partition is defined exactly the same way as we did before, but uh, now we need to put some symmetries, okay? So now we ask, we want to have a least energy G invariant solution to the Dirichlet problem in each omega i, which uh, uh, has minimal energy in the, in the G invariant sense. So it, this infimum is uh, now taken over functions that are G invariant. And we, have, we want that the total energy is minimal, okay? So this is just the, the natural generalization of the, of the definition I gave before. So now what are the results? What uh, Angela and I proved is the following. That if the dimension of every orbit is larger than or equal to one, as in the example I gave you before, and smaller than M, then the Yamabe system has a least energy G invariant solution, okay? And we repeat the same game as we played before. Now we have a G invariant solution, and now we want to use the system to obtain an optimal partition. So just not to repeat the previous results, let me let me just state it like this. If the dimension of every orbit is larger than or equal to one and smaller than M, then there exists an optimal partition for the Yamabe equation, which is now G invariant, such that the, the, each of these guys is connected, the complement of the manifold of the, of the set of the partition in the manifold uh, consists of a regular and a singular part. So the same things we had before. So what is the advantage of this of this result? Well, the advantage is that you see we have no no condition on the dimension of m. We have no condition on m being locally conformally flat or not. We only have a condition on the symmetries, right? So, for instance, we can apply the results to the sphere. Okay. So, let me just uh, simply tell you what uh, what uh, what um, what is the, the meaning of this dimension being larger than or equal to one s. So, you see, we are going to look for for functions that are G invariant for solutions to the system that are G invariant. But now, if the dimension of every orbit is larger than or equal to one, this means we cannot have blow up because blow up occurs only at points. It cannot occur at something that has positive dimension, right? That, that, that has dimension larger than or equal to one, right? So, uh, uh, formally, this is a result by Abe and uh, Vogon that says that if you look at the, at the Sobolev space of G invariant functions, it is compactly embedded in L2 star, okay? 
and this is why this the previous results are true without any uh, further assumptions. So now let me apply the previous results to the case of the sphere. Okay, so we take the sphere, we take the, the same group as we did before, and then we know that the orbits look like this, okay? And if we assume that both N1 and N2 are larger than or equal to 2, then the assumptions are satisfied. So the dimension is always larger than or equal to 1. Now, if we look at the orbit space, so if we look at the space where we identify every orbit in the sphere to a point, what we get is an arc, okay? And the, the endpoints of the arc correspond to the orbits that are just the spheres. And the point inside in the interior of, of the arc correspond to the orbits that are this product of, of spheres. So if you take your optimal partition, so you have a, a collection of open G invariant sets that are connected on the sphere, and you look at the image of these open sets in the orbit space, what you get is a collection of intervals, right? Because the open sets here are connected. So what you get here is a collection of intervals and the intervals, you can order them. You can say, well, this is the first interval and this is the second one or the other way around is the same, but you can order these intervals. And so what does the, pro the theorem say in, in the case of, of the sphere? So if we take the sphere, then one has an optimal partition, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, with respect to the group that I, I just mentioned before. And after we reorder the partition, as I, as I said, by taking into account its projection onto the arc, what one sees is just this picture. So the first, the first set is this green, solid green torus. The second set is the orange torus minus the green torus. The third set is the blue solid torus minus the orange torus. And the final set is the complement of the blue torus, which is again a torus, right? When you look at them in the sphere. So, and the intersection of two consecutive sets is just a toroidal surface of so the product of the two spheres is this orbit. And if the sets are not consecutive, then the intersection is empty. So the picture, the picture that one gets for the for the for the partition is, is very clear. And in fact, you see each one of these omega eyes is smooth. So not only not only uh, the complement, I mean the the, uh, the free boundary is a manifold of dimension uh, uh, m minus one. I mean of 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 a C one manifold, a C one alpha manifold, but it is in fact smooth. So you get a very beautiful partition just by considering the symmetries. And moreover, you can look at the limit uh, uh, function in each one of these omega i's, and you can look at the sum of these uh, limit functions with alternating signs, and what you get is a gene variant nodal solution to the Yamabe equation on the sphere that has precisely L nodal domains and that has least energy among all of these solutions. So, of course, uh, we know that, uh, I mean, this is a, a classical result by Ding, that the Yamabe equation on the sphere, or alternatively, the, the Yamabe equation in RM, has infinitely many sign-changing solutions. And the, the, the group of symmetries that we use is precisely the same group of symmetries that was considered by, by Ding. But uh, he says only there, there are infinitely many uh, sign-changing solutions, but said nothing about the, the, the nodal domains. Then 
uh, a year ago, Fernandez and Petian published a very nice paper where they use ODE methods to show that for every L, there is precisely one sign changing solution with precisely L nodal domains. And the contribution that we made in the previous theorem is, 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 says uh, further that the, the, the uh, solution that we get has least energy among all of the solutions. So this kind of uh, closes the circle and we will go back to, to, uh, to sign changing solutions of the Yamabe equation. And well, this is, this is all I, I wanted to tell you today. Thank you very much.